All right, so I'm going to model this uh, JW dog ball here. And uh, you can see it's got a, a diameter, probably three inches or so, and it's offset down downward. So what I'm going to do is, is offer some techniques in Creo 4 that, that sets, sets us up to make rapid-fire changes to the model. So many times as designers and engineers, we're under the gun to get something done, but we don't think about how, how, how quickly we can make changes to the model. And I think that's really what, uh, what I'm all about. Uh, my name is Bart Brecka. I work at Design Engine uh, based out of Chicago, and we teach a wide variety of Creo modeling classes. So I'm going to go ahead and make that three uh, inch diameter and uh, check out of it. So I know that'll revolve. I'm not going to go ahead and revolve it at the moment. So some of the techniques that I'm going to share uh, are, are so, sometimes a bit resistant to some of the uh, um, more experienced participants, you know, or engineers. So um, this technique that I'm getting ready to share here is what I call underlying curve geometry. So I'm, I'm basically laying out different curves so that uh, I can come back and change it in sort of a rapid fire kind of way. Um, I want to be able to make 20 changes to the model in just a couple minutes, not, not uh, you know, it's not how fast I model it. So those two curves, I'm going to color a slightly different color. And I do this because I want to kind of leave a breadcrumb trail behind so that other participants, somebody else that's going to modify it, kind of has an understanding of what it is. So, for example, I should be able to grab that curve and drag it around and make some changes to the model. This next geometry I'm going to place, sketch curve, uh, I call the culmination curve, the culmination of all the others. I'll use dynamically trim to kind of just bite out that area there. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and put a, 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 a fillet radius in, in that corner. I'll do the same thing to the other side and make them equal. Now, that, that geometry, since it's not closed, is automatically going to extrude as a surface. I don't need it as a surface. I just wanted to kind of articulate verbally what, what, what in fact that is. Now I'm going to go ahead and revolve this geometry, um, and I'm also going to do it as a surface. Okay. So I, I use the edge of the curve as what to revolve about. What's interesting is you can also grab the right click through and grab that Z uh, as, as, the, as something to revolve about. Um, most, uh, most designers and engineers with eight, nine, 10,000 hours experience might remember that we had to put a center line down the middle to get it to revolve. Okay, now I'm gonna take that culmination curve and project it up onto the geometry. You see how that went uh, all the way from top to bottom? So now I'm gonna take a trim and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll trim to the, the sketch curve and uh, now I'm going to offset the surface because if if you uh, if you notice the uh, the ball that I had up on the screen here, it has an offset. So I need to step off, and that's where my offset is going to occur. Uh, however, I want to offset this geometry. I'm going to right click through and grab the entire uh, set of surfaces. And I just simply want to reorder it before my projection. So I just reordered it. I should have done it in that order. I'm going to go ahead and hide the projected curve. I want to grab the edge of the surface and I'm going to build a sweep. I want to maintain a specific level of draft, maybe two or three degrees draft. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and sweep the geometry around here. So I'm going to come over, I'm going to basically right click through to grab the entire, the entire curve. See, I'll move my mouse around and, and got that that uh, geometry to select everything. So I'm gonna take this back to the sketch and I'm just gonna sketch a, uh, a line on here. Okay, I should be able to change that at will. 
now that I've built that surface, I've kind of got the basic geometry set up. Let's go ahead and merge everything together. Um, I'll left click and left click to merge that final merge. You got to kind of get the arrows just right. So in this case, I merged, you know, build, build the selection set of the merge appropriately to get what you want to keep. And then uh, we put the round on. And uh, you could solidify it at this point or or um, solidify it before you put the rounds on or after. All right, so there's my uh, dog ball. Now, if, if I had a side picture of this ball, you would see that, uh, that the diameter is a little bit larger uh, there. So I want to make a handful of changes to the model. So let's, uh, let's come down to that very first circle sketch that I built and, and drag that around to see the model update in real time. I need, I need that kind of uh, 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 real-time feedback or else I feel like it's too slow to make those changes. I'm also going to take that sketch and I'm going to take it back to the sketch and I'm going to delete the center constraint that I've got there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and now and align it back to the datum down the center. And I, I just wanted one uh, Y dimension to be able to push it back and forth. So um, when I dislodged my reference edge, I, so I want one dimension there. There it is. So whatever, whatever it needs to be, I'm just going to make it point one now. When I check out all the other features, nothing should fail. Now I'm starting to get the sort of shape that I'm looking to make, this, uh, this slant to the dog ball. My pit bull will... Uh, take just about three minutes to chew this dog ball until it quits squeaking. You can't let him have those. But uh, it does have a sort of slant to it like that if you look at it. Now if you look at this thing straight on, do you see how both of these edges are parallel? So what I'd like to be able to do is redefine that, that square, that I, the rectangle that I put down in here. I'm just going to remove the vertical constraints, I might even force symmetry this way. And uh, I already forgot that way, so I'll go uh, this way. And I'm, I'm just gonna ride it up so that it's in fact a, uh, a trapezoid. Now I expect some features to fail, but uh, one of the things that uh, we like to say as, as things fail how quickly can you manage the failure so it doesn't fail again? So I'm going to take this back to the sketch and simply hit update. Now that I've made this change, I, I want to be able to make other changes and, and, and have the model never, uh, never fail again. So I'm just going to take a couple of seconds to, to look at it. I've got one dimension for the radius in this entire sketch. So it seems a little strange that I would go out of my way to make that culmination curve. But now that I've done that, you'll see that I'm capable of making some really drastic changes to the model in ways that, uh, that uh, others may not be comfortable making. Live on the screen. Now I've got, now, now these, uh, the, the front of my dog balls not parallel. They're, they're, they're smiling or frowning, depending on your perspective. So uh, if anybody wants uh, this ball, they should put their email address and uh, we'll send it to them. Again, my name is Bart Brecka with Design Engine. Thank you for watching.